Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitali and I'm back today in Italy in my grandmother's kitchen and we are going to make her uh, famous fruit tart, in fact, rosati frutta. Uh, there's a few components to this, to this tart. You're going to get the crust, the cream filling and then the fruit, uh, which the cream filling is over here, which she's already done and I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to take you back into my kitchen so I can walk you through how she made it because to save some time and because it's really hot in here, she made it this morning to cool. So I'm going to walk you through how I make it exactly how she does it step by step. All right, now that was the fastest I've ever gone back to the U.S. and no customs, no, no layovers, nothing. Pretty awesome. All right, let's get going on making the actual custard. You'll need just a few basic ingredients, which I'm sure you already have on hand, such as whole milk, granulated sugar, flour, egg yolks, you need a lemon and some vanilla paste. You could also use a vanilla uh, extract or a little bit of vanillina, whichever you got. Now, I'm making this exactly like she made hers for this for the specific recipe. So, in a large saucepan, you'll add all your ingredients. I know, crazy, but that's just how she does it. She doesn't temper anything. She just adds everything all in one go. So that's what we're doing. Egg yolks try to get all of them out and then you'll need a little bit of lemon zest you could also use orange zest um, it's really a preference just in a little bit of citrus you could leave it out completely but a little bit of citrus goes um, a long way and then you'll need a little bit of vanilla paste again you don't have to use vanilla paste you can use any vanilla um, that you have on hand or that you prefer I'm using a little bit of this what I like to call liquid gold get that off my spoon and now I'm going to whisk this together until to mix all of my ingredients. Perfect. Now that all your ingredients are mixed, you're going to put this on the burner about medium heat and you're going to let this cook for about mm, seven to eight minutes or so, stirring very gently with a wooden spoon or a heat proof spatula until the mixture thickens and I will show you what it should look like once it's there. This has thickened beautifully. You can see it coats the back of a spoon. If you run your finger through it, it stays separated. It is perfect. But now this does need to be strained because there are some lumps in there from the flour. So I just pass it through a sieve because we want a really, really smooth and delicious custard for our fruit tart or anything that you're really using it for. This custard is pretty much perfect for anything and she uses it, my beautiful nonna uses it as her main custard for all of her dishes. So pass it through and this will thicken as it cools because it needs to go in the fridge to cool completely and it'll take several hours. So just patiently pass this through, there weren't that many lumps but those few that are in there you do not want in your final dish. Okay, make sure you get it all from the bottom from the bottom now we're here and I'm gonna wrap this with some plastic wrap the important thing is that the plastic wrap is actually touching the custard so it, it eliminates that thick skin that forms on the very top you don't want that so I'm gonna wrap this up with plastic stick this into the fridge for to cook completely you can even do this the night before and you are in business back to my nona so to assemble the pie so now it's time to make the crust my phone bust them Okay, 300 grams of flour. Now she's going to tell you guys the uh, amounts in the metrics, you know, using the metric system and I will write them all for you uh, using our American system on my website. 150 grams of sugar. She does it right on the table. 100 grams of butter. Adesso non do frigorifero, do freddo, adesso ci ti Room temperature, of course, because it needs to be nice and creamy. She does it all on the table using her hands. I would probably use a standing mixer. She doesn't have one, so she just uses the table. Pizzicoli salad. She's going to get a pinch of salt. Now, if you have been following me for a while, then you were here last year when we were filming together and this is going to be a little different than the normal Laura in the Kitchen episodes. They're no, nowhere near sort of 
perfectly prepped or anything like that because anything goes and that's just the way we roll around here so we hope that you can appreciate that she's I'm not quite sure she's just gathering more ingredients as we go so she's added a pinch of salt a bustina intera di pan degli angeli metà o tre quarti Okay. And she's also gotten a little packet of uh, Pan de Angeli. Also, you can use baking powder and vanilla powder. You can use vanilla extract, of course. But a vanilla, vamos, vanilina. So you add the vanilla now at this point. It's very different than the crust that we're used to. Pie crust that we're used to is really flaky. We use cold fats because it's important to build those layers. Um, the pie crust here, it's a little bit different. It's actually kind of really soft and tender and buttery, which is why everything is at room temperature. Trust me, it's still going to be delightful. Look at this, look at this lemon. Quanto? Yeah, I'm going to grate half of this lemon since it's pretty big. You could use a whole lemon if you've got just like a normal sized lemon. This is a really, really, really fresh lemon, and she says if it's a little bit green, it's actually a really good thing. And it's amazing how different they smell than the lemons we get in the U.S. And they're right from outside, actually. She has a big clementine tree in her backyard, and her friend has lemon trees. Mmm. No, but you don't. It's back from the garden, no? In casa, nova. And also, look at those fresh eggs. Look at the color of that egg. Mm, doesn't get any fresher than this, I tell you that. She gets fresh eggs every couple days because her friend um, her friend has a bunch of chickens and things like that, so she gets fresh eggs every couple days. She they, they swap. She'll make them a pie for the eggs or a cake or something. If a friend of hers gives her eggplant, she'll make them a thing of eggplant parm. It's quite amazing. Ah, si, si, si. If you need more additional flour, if your dough is a little bit sticky, you can always add a bit more. I mean, it also depends if the humidity, it depends how dry it is. You might need a little bit more, but start with 300 grams and then build up from there. She takes every little tiny bit off of every utensil. Kind of amazing. She does not waste a thing, I tell you. She's adding some liquor. It's a mixture of. Give me some. Me da strega, me da limoncello. Like a shot glass. Eh. A shot glass, half strega, half limoncello. If you don't want to add it, by all means, leave it completely out. But you know her. She likes her liquor. In it. She doesn't drink liquor. Um, you know, just like a, a, a cup of it, but she just always puts it in her desserts. And I know a lot of people are going to ask if it's safe with children, and it absolutely is. You're not going to get tipsy or anything from it. It just gives you amazing aroma. I'm going to take off my rings. In fact, she saw me put them on, and she's like, uh, you know you're going to be making dough, right? You don't need that. So I'm going to put it that's a canon of bog. Eh. We're making this because my uncle's coming to town. He lives in Sicily. He's coming into town in just a couple of days, and we're going to make. If I got a jeet, a jeet. See, that's what I said. I said, if it's, you know, temperature wise, if it's really hot, you're going to need to add a bit more flour. But anyway, we're making this for, uh, we're making two in the new tart pans I brought her. Because my uncle's coming into town, and we're saving one for when he arrives in a couple days, actually maybe tomorrow night. And then we're gonna eat one tonight, which by the time we film this, it might look a little bit dark in here. So again, we hope you forgive us, but that's just the way it is around here. It's real life. I want to take you into my grandmother's kitchen the way it really is. I really didn't want to add any bells and whistles to it because to me, um, for you to get to know me a little bit better, I think it's important that you see the way we really are. And this is how we are. Pensi che è buono o ci vuole un po' di più farina, no? Vieni tu di qua. Poco, poco. A little bit more flour, a little bit at a time. E qui sapete che vengo a pulire, è già bustino. 
She's adding a half bag of the pante yangjili. You could add, you could have added it in an earlier step if you wanted to. Um, if you don't have it, you can always substitute a couple teaspoons of baking powder. However, the internet is amazing nowadays, and if you go on Amazon, you can order pretty much anything. Eh, però mo sta buona, no? <laughs> if they go into someone's pie, it'll be a gift for them. She's buttering some tart pans. Those are the tart pans with the removable bottom that I brought them, that I brought her. I finished kneading this, and as you can see, it's now really soft and it's not sticky at all. It's just beautiful. I'm gonna cut this. Allora, she ma non metà metà, che sei più grossi che sti. I'm going to cut this in a little bit less, like three quarters, more like two thirds maybe. She said cut it in half and half. If there's anything left over, we'll make cookie out of the dough. Works well for me. I'm going to take a little extra flour on my rolling pin and I'm going to start to roll this out. Move it constantly so that it doesn't stick. Make sure you sprinkle it with some flour. And then I just, she does the same exact thing I do. When you roll it on the pin, take your tart pan close to, tart pan close to you and then roll it out. So she decided against the cookies for that and we took out another tart pan to make a, a third fruit tart. Now she preheated the oven. Ah no, quando so un forno a picciata? Quando quello grado 180? 130 nel. 150. Eh mette 150. Eh no, 140. 140. Per quanto tempo? Okay, put this in the 350 degree oven. Uh, she, hers outside is a little bit not as hot, but 350 degrees, 25 minutes or so until it's lightly golden brown, and it'll be perfect. And we'll show you what it looks like once it's cooled down enough. We're gonna tidy up, clean up, and get going on uh, getting our fruit ready to top this with. The crust was in the oven for relatively about 40 minutes, only because we had four pies in there at one time, because believe it or not, with the little bit left over dough, she made a jam tart. Yes, she did. So that took a little bit longer, but normally if you were making this one at a time or two at a time, it'll take about a half hour for them to be golden brown. And then it's crucial that you let them cool completely. And now I've got my cream here ready. And you've sliced up some fruits. And a heads up, if you're using bananas, make sure that when you slice them, you squeeze some lemon juice over them, otherwise they will turn brown. We've got some cherries that are pitted and just halved, and then some kiwi sliced and strawberries. Those are the fruits that we're using, but by all means, use any kind that you like. You could use peaches, you could use um, pineapple, you could use mangoes, you could really use anything that you like. Allora, quando è quando è grande per torta? Spartel. Spartel a tre. Eh. Eh. Spagnolo. Io non voglio un cima tanti grammi, capi? Eh. Fa me dai, fa me dai tu. You really want to just keep an eye out. You don't want to have too much cream, but you certainly don't want to have too little. So we're probably going to use this for three, um, for all three bases. It'll be plenty. Okay, so now it's time to layer the fruit. You can do this in any way you like. She's going to do this in her own pattern. Shuli Raman. She said it's slippery, it slips away from her fingers, but that's just the way it is. She ran away to cut some, actually no, I'm going to put one leg over here, to cut some more kiwi for the other pie. I'm just layering things on, just putting some fruit around. You know what would really be good in this too? Oh, you know how I always talk about how if you want to give yourself a nervous breakdown, by all means, pit cherries by hand instead of a cherry pitter? I don't to give it a minute. Guess what she made me do? I had to pit half a kilo of cherries by hand. It took me forever, but I don't say no. I do it with a smile on my face. Now, the last step, once you've put all your fruit on top of your 
of the custard is to cover it with some gelatin. Now, for me anyway, this is the only gelatin I have ever used when making fruit tarts. This is the only gel I kind of know how, how, you know how to use it. It's meant for this kind of thing. In fact, if you look at the picture on the package, it's got a fruit tart very similar to what we're making. It, what it does is it preserves the fruit, and you can absolutely leave the step out if you're just using this, if you're eating this right away. But if you're going to eat it within a couple of days, I suggest you do cover it, otherwise the fruit is going to start to look a bit odd. Now, you can get this in any Italian supermarket. It's made by Panda Yangeli. It's called Torta Gel, and it's clear. You can also, again, buy this online if you wanted to, um, and you just follow the directions on the package. Basically, you take the content of this package, a couple of tablespoons of sugar, and some water, and you mix it together, and then you put it on the stove for a couple minutes or until everything is melted. And then you let it cool for a few minutes, and then you spoon it on top. Uh, just very, very gently. Now, this is going to go in the fridge to set for a while. You want to make sure that the, um, the gelatin is set, and then we're going to give this a try once it's done. So once you've let these set for a bit, you want to make sure the gelatin is fully hard, and you can go right in and dig in. The longer you let this sit, the softer the actual crust gets. It kind of becomes moist from the juices of the fruit and the cream. It gets all nice and moist from the cream and the natural juices. We'll let her try first. Mm. Mm. It's absolutely delicious. It's still crunchy. She prefers it when it sits for a while in a sponge and the crust becomes a little more spongy. I think it's delicious. Buona? Mm -hmm. Buona Let's give her one more bite. Let's make this one a little bit bigger. Mmm. Mmm. We've got company coming around, so we're going to let you go. We hope you've enjoyed spending time with me. We'll see you all next time. Saludano. Bye-bye. Gonna take my secret stairway that takes me to Italy. No one knew the secret. It's been in my kitchen the whole time. See ya.